I think there are multiple challenges facing South Africa uh, on the broadband side. The first one is fixed broadband penetration. We only have uh, approximately 12% fixed line penetration in the country, of which broadband is about 6%. Uh, so on the fixed side, uh, you know, uh, broadband is a challenge. On the mobile broadband side, I think a couple of challenges. The first one is the device ecosystem. Uh, devices are still expensive um, and the average South African finds it you know out of their reach to afford a device to access the internet with plus pay for services on top of that. Um, other challenges that face us would be spectrum um, you know sub 1 gigahertz spectrum to cover rural South Africa. South Africa is quite a big uh, uh, geography and um, people are you know concentrated in some areas but a lot of people live in the countryside and to get mobile broadband to them is expensive and um, yeah we, we need sub one gig spectrum um, so those are the two main ones I think the, the, the if I had to think about the last one uh, education in South Africa plays a big part around mobile broadband adoption as well and uh, you know that's where uh, we need to ensure that the country is educated at a level that can understand and use the technology. I think from LTE the first thing is to know your target market and to understand what services you want to offer. Um, so understanding where to position LTE in relation to 3G, in relation to 2G and in relation to ADSL. So understanding exactly where it fits in and then coming up with unique pricing models that can enable quick uptake and experience. Absolutely, Telcom has to differentiate itself on speed uh, and quality of services as well. Uh, and um, from a marketing side, I think a unique proposition to get the market excited about LTE is important. So Huawei uh, provides Telcom uh, Mobile with complete uh, um, mobile uh, solution today. Uh, the whole entire core network is uh, Huawei based, as well as the 2G and 3G uh, deployment is, is Huawei based. We are now engaging Huawei to deploy LTE, uh, and we have opted to use the TD LTE based on the 2300 megahertz spectrum. Um, because we have quite an abundant amount of spectrum and we believe that the TD LTE is suited towards broadband because you can have asymmetric traffic distribution in terms of upload and download. You don't have to use up your spectrum for upload uh, half and download half. You can decide how you want to um, um, configure the upload and download because 90% uh, of mobile broadband, or I would say 80% of mobile broadband traffic is on the downlink uh, and 20% is on the uplink. We have opted for a, wi a MiFi, a personal Wi-Fi device, um, we call the Egg, which enables all smartphones or tablets or laptops to be LTE enabled. Because if you create a Wi-Fi hotspot around you with an LTE carrier, your ordinary device can get uh, LTE speeds. Uh, we definitely have smartphone as part of our roadmap because you know in the future as LTE matures, smartphones will be critical. But for now, we see uh, personal Wi-Fi devices or MiFi um, routers, fixed CPE for the home, and dongles uh, modems for the laptops as well. I think uh, careful design and planning is really important. Understanding what you want the network to achieve. And it's important that marketing leads this discussion because they need to understand how to position it in the marketplace. So don't follow a technology-centric approach. Follow a marketing approach where the customer's needs are decided on first and then you start designing a network around that. Um, also, uh, device strategy is key for LTE. A 
Look, I think our expectations are high. We've visited a few markets now in Asia. We've been to Japan with SoftBank. We've also been uh, to visit China Mobile in the various cities. And so far, the results that I've seen there are very encouraging. So we have raised our expectations now that uh, you know, we can achieve the same, if not better, results. Um, we, we, we're confident that the, that the design of the network and the strategy is solid. Uh, we also have set up six LTE sites already that's working in South Africa, and we're getting very good performance so far from them. Uh, uh, and we're now ready to start the full deployment. So we plan to launch the LTE service next year in m April or May. Um, and we, as I said, plan to launch it in the TD LTE space. And it's an overlay network on our 3G and 2G uh, network that's deployed. Backhaul is critical, so we have to ensure that we have good fiber backhaul uh, with ex excess capacity to ensure that we don't um, you know, um, limit the experience from a backhaul perspective. Um, in the meantime, the network is focused on the metropolitan areas where there's high traffic and high demand for broadband services. And we're using our current 3G demand and our fixed line demand because we're also a fixed line network for ADSL services to gauge where to deploy. So we, we know where the big demand is and that's where we're gonna focus the deployment. Yeah, from a service perspective, I think they cross many areas. A telecom is extremely strong in the enterprise market. So the enterprise market is going to be a key area for us to, to, to focus on. Um, not only from corporate customers and corporate employees using the service for themselves, but also machine-to-machine -machine applications, uh, you know, video streaming, uh, security cameras, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from a consumer perspective, I think fast uh, and um, uh, convenient mobile broadband access is what we're looking for. Like I said, fixed line, um, fixed line uh, penetration is extremely low in South Africa. So we're hoping that LTE can fill the gap to bring South Africa on par with the rest of the world for broadband. So I think, you know, if you have to look at the South African market, it's quite uh, segmented. Uh, you've got the early adopters and the really first world kind of users who really want high speed services, video streaming, uh, IPTV kind of services. Um, and those, those guys want it with a good experience. Right now, the, the ADSL network in, in South Africa can achieve up to 10 megabits per second, and we're now upgrading it to 40 megabits per second. LTE gives us the, the, the flexibility for for the users who use these ADSL services at home to use this, get used to these kinds of speeds on the move as well. So, you know, waiting at airports, waiting at public areas, and really, you know, socializing with friends. Um, we believe that they are going to be the guys who take up the LTE service for on the move. Again, corporate customers who have uh, excessive needs for broadband access uh, on, on the move uh, is another market that we, we're going to be focusing on. But in South Africa, we've also got quite a lot of gated communities or compound areas, security villages. And a lot of these new cities as they, or villages as they get developed do not have fixed access in them. And those, those customers are looking for good quality, stable broadband solutions that will provide them the same access that they counterparts in more established areas are experiencing where there is ADSL. So we believe there's quite a big market specifically because of the low fixed line penetration in the country. Okay, so the, the TD, firstly, uh, the, the advantage that we have is that we have in excess of 60 megahertz of spectrum, which is quite a lot of spectrum. It allows us to use three carriers of 20 megahertz each, which obviously then reduces the signal to noise ratio or, uh, or increases the signal to noise ratio, which means less interference. So from that perspective, the quality that we can deploy is better. 
Uh, also from a bandwidth perspective and capacity perspective, we believe that the 2300 uh, band um, allows us to, 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 to offer more bandwidth and more capacity, more speed. Um, also, the fact that we can structure uplink and downlink would give customers a better experience for video applications, which is what most South Africans are consuming today on broadband services. What we've seen in Japan is that um, the personal uh, MiFi or Wi-Fi device and uh, router and dongle is what's the most uh, used or most being sold by SoftBank. And it's a simple strategy because a lot of consumers already have iPads and already have uh, iPhones and Samsung uh, smartphones, etc. Uh, using a MiFi solution enables all those devices on LTE. I think, like I said, I think telemetry or machine-to-machine -machine applications are quite uh, are possible. Um, you know, transportation companies can now use LTE in their in their vehicles to offer customers a, a better experience for for wireless. You got cars that could now be built have built-in LTE in them that when they drive in the city, they have rich access to media and content for the for the passengers. So I think you know it's as wide open as you want to, you know, as your imagination. Um, the, the fact that you have these huge pipes of data on the move, I think the, the options are, are endless. Again, specifically from a telecom perspective, there are some areas where we have copper theft, where, where people steal copper from the ground, which results in uh, down and degraded service to corporate customers. We can now offer a reliable backup solution using LTE, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, there's quite a few options um, for corporate customers.